the Note Air 3C. Wow, what a great device this is. The Note Air 3C is part of the Note Air 3 lineup from Books, and there is now a black and white version as well. And that is $100 different, and I'm sure a similar difference in euros or pounds. It's a really powerful tablet. It is advertised as a 2.4 gigahertz processor, although you'll see some confusion in the early parts of this video where I look and I'm trying to figure out why I've got a 2.8 gigahertz processor. But the eating tablet community has got to the bottom of that and there seems to just be a random difference. And some units were shipped with a higher processor than another. And there wasn't any foul play there. There wasn't any trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. And in any case, in daily use, they're pretty much the same anyway. In this video, I'm going to show you a bit of a timeline of my experience with the Note Air 3C so far. And I'm actually going to revisit this because most of the community think that this is the best e-ink tablet that you can buy right now. And I have to say, I don't disagree. There is a bit of a debate between it and the Tab Ultra. We'll see later on in this video. But as you can see, I do spend a lot of time making my videos look and sound as good as possible. So have you considered putting this video up on your 4K TV and settling back with a drink and a snack and really enjoying the content in that way. And take out a notepad or your current e-ink tablet and go ahead and make some notes as you go. In any case, settle back and enjoy. And let's see what it's like to actually get this thing out of the box in the first place. This is exciting. It's that familiar orange line on the box there. And this is the one that a lot of you have been telling me that you were looking forward to right back from when we covered the Tab Ultra initially. It looks on paper certainly like it's exactly what you would expect it to be. The question is, can we have the book super refresh technology and excellent battery life? just feels so at home, so light, certainly compared to the Tab Ultra series. It is the Pen Plus rather than the Pen 2 Pro that you get as standard in this. You get a TF card removal tool, which is not for SIM cards because it doesn't have that, but it does have space for expandable storage, which is cool. And you get a USB cable. And you get the documentation, which I'm not sure why I even bother showing you this, because you know I'm not going to have a little look, look through it. Quick start guide, turn it on and do what it says on the screen. That's really nice. The rounded corners and this slim design, I think it's 5.8 millimeters thick. I was expecting a yeah. paper feeling screen. Yeah, nice feeling screen. And a micro SD card slot, which is new into this range. Ah, they moved the power button to the same place as the Tab Ultra. And it looks like it's also a fingerprint reader. That's very welcome. Some might be disappointed that it doesn't come with the Pen 2 Pro, but this is a perfectly acceptable pen. And well, they do have to differentiate the lineup somehow. The other exciting thing is it's now a Qualcomm 2.2 gigahertz octa-core processor. And this is all only $50 more than the Note Air 2 Plus currently is. It's been some time since the Note Air 2 Plus. I will make a full comparison video between this and the Note Air 2 Plus. I don't know why, but I leave my books devices on Beijing time. Cool, looks nice. Yeah, it does automatically go in the, the older Note style homepage. I wonder if you can actually change that in the, in the settings. You can see it is Android 12, which is an update. So this is the one that so many of you have been waiting for. I had lots of comments saying that you're skipping the Tab Ultra and skipping the Tab Ultra C and that you're waiting for this device, the Note Air 3C. They've skipped a black and white version and they've gone straight for this color version. It has a really nice blue kind of gray sheen to it. It's not that old brash blue of the first Note Air and Note Air 2. It's not the nice professional green. It's this lovely sleek blue gray. I really do like it. It's a really nice build quality straight away. Pen feels good. Everything that you'd expect from Books device, including the full Play Store. I'm gonna get signed in and I'm gonna play with it and I'm gonna come back with some thoughts after a little while. And now what's happened is Books have truly forked their lines. So this is the Note Air line for those who want note taking mainly. And then the Tab Ultra line is for the productivity minded. But which should you buy? So I'm gonna create a note and it'll just be forgotten on the device because I'm not logged in yet. Yeah, you can swipe from the top or the bottom any point to get home. And they brought it with Tilt, which is really nice to see. It is a very grippy screen is what my first thoughts about that is. Not sure whether I love it, but it's a very note screen. So what about the software? Has that been forked also? Well, the tab line brought a new launcher. I wondered if they would have just decided just to totally bin this more note style of launcher, but they clearly haven't. They're clearly still going for this. One thing to say is you can put any launcher you want on this Android tablet, so you could make it look in any way that you want. But this new release has been launched with some interesting note-taking improvements, so I'll be looking at those later in the video as well. But the biggest issue with the tab line has been how power-hungry that GPU has been, and that's the thing. 
they've brought this with the book super refresh technology and so far it's looking incredibly clean and clear and that was a legitimate reason to actually stick with the note air 2 plus but have they managed to deliver the screen performance whilst improving the power management i can't wait to find out one more thing to get out of the box though what's the case look like in this iteration would have thought it would feel somewhat similar to the note air 2 plus case no it feels more akin to the tab mini case this full wraparound for the pen it is magnetic that's very nice it does feel a bit chunkier when it's in its case though it has this weird thing where it can i guess that lets it stand up does it how do you do it it's origami case they call it i'm it? Um, famously bad with cases any help i'll figure it out so i'll get signed in i'm going to do a testing video and that will be out right now on my channel if you want to become a channel member so if you want to see a full just 4k top down video of me going through the initial testing once i'm all logged into this device i'll leave that link in the description so I asked if they were available now. The Note Air 3C is available now from the book's website, but it will be a two week wait for the Tab Ultra C Pro. So I did figure out the case. Just fold right off the back there, fold that origami bit in, get it right, and then that flap goes on like so, and it stands up. And I do really like that mode. I think that I will miss the keyboard case from the Tab Ultra C, but I can imagine myself using this along with a, a Bluetooth keyboard. And here's a cheap one, which was bundled into uh, something that I've been reviewing recently. Cool, that's connected. This is incredibly light and I guess I could easily carry this around if I wanted to. And I can see this portrait mode for typing away on this screen like a typewriter, maybe with a premium like Keychron mechanical keyboard for here at home and this very lightweight, cheap thing in my bag. It's good that you can actually still use this thing with very little compromise. You still have the book's voice typing input there on the screen at all times and you can use that and then this for editing. Yeah, that's the interesting point. When I compare this to the Tab Ultra C in the next video, you'll see how little compromise that there actually is between this and the Tab Ultra C. Now, in this release comes some new software features, so I'm gonna have a little look around those. The first is called SmartScribe, and you can access that by your AI panel here. And essentially what it is, is one stroke forming of smart objects, one stroke mark recognition. Firstly, one stroke, if you do a circle, and hold it down, it will turn into a circle, do a square, hold it down, do generally any shape at all, hold it down, it will make that. That's really quick and easy. The other thing is now you don't actually need to go into the lasso to select things. So if I go select and I've got my AI on, I can just ring it and it selects it. I don't need to press the lasso function now. And all of my things are up here now as well. For instance, tags and linking, I could just add in. I don't know why it's gone back to lasso though. So that's called smart scribe. You can also delete things. So again, maybe you're wondering why on earth they've shipped this without an eraser because this new software, do you even need an eraser on the back if actually that's going to work well like that? Well, that's great anymore. That's quite cool. Just tag that. So this on the surface doesn't seem like a huge update, but actually I think this will allow you to build out links and tables of contents and tags really easily and in a really fluid way. And it's going to actually rival some of the functionality of the SuperNote that we all know and love. Really quite like that. The other new update is the linking or the changes to the links. So now when we link, we can change to link to a different notepad. We can link to a place within a certain notepad. So we can link into this same notepad, but onto a certain page. And now when I hold my hold the button down, I can actually see this created the links there. There it is. So the tags get this little box around. It says something like you should hold down and then it shows you like a tree of all the links. Is it if I actually delete the icon? No, that's just deleted the link. Just so I did ask the question about those stacked links of my contact at books and they showed me this essentially. The way it works is once you've gone through a link, you can at any point hold down these buttons here and it will show you the kind of tree of where you've been and therefore you can navigate around. So if I go forward to my contents page, little contents page I've made in here and I want to go forward to this, now I can hold down on this. I can see all the links that are available the page there so back to page two for instance well, i'm not so sure about those why in this link tree here that you can get why is it showing me the pages rather than actually showing me the text that i've bothered to input into the link there so links are really good it's quite cool actually quite like that so if i go to a contents page and make a new link use the smart scribe feature give it a little ring it's also smart lasso so it works out that i did want the rest of that word there link link to notes I have to go link to page to select this one. It should be, in my opinion, the first thing you get is linked to within this document. That's probably what most people will do. There we are, and I'm gonna call it. So what I would say to books is, actually, first of all, just actually do the OCR on that thing that I've circled. And then also in this link tree, 
call it the same thing there. So make it a bit snappier for me to make a kind of table of contents and a kind of route around my document, route around my notes. That would be really, really useful. But it's good. I quite like Smart Scroll. So I think there's more to figure out there. Maybe I'm doing something wrong or maybe it's just not as easy to use as it should be. Talking about reading next, you've also got double tap to convert, not bad. So your handwritten notes can very easily become written notes. You also have, if you hold down, it'll do a perfect underline. And the same with highlights, sort of free form. I don't want it to be a free form. Hold it down, it becomes a perfect highlight. That is a perfect highlight. Don't seem to be able to do what you can on some though and just highlight whole rows like that. There's also the smart lasso option now rather than free lasso. So I can select objects with a smart lasso, which as you can see, just I don't need to get it perfect. Exactly what I wanted to lasso. These are quite cool features. Now furthermore, this is the biggest thing on this Note Air 3C, is that they've actually optimized the display and it has got the same mode as you had on the Tab Ultra C. So they've introduced balance fast, ultra fast, rather than the older X modes and speed modes and things like that. As you can see, it clears up the white space really nicely. So let's go ahead and look at a browser and you can see that it does exactly what the Tab Ultra series does, clearing out that white space beautifully as soon as you move something. So it means that you can live essentially in the balanced mode or ultra fast or fast modes and you get a really good experience of really nice crisp clear images great colors and clear white space it's just generally really good still doesn't perform quite as well at clearing up the black space for instance maybe that's next so i'm really not sure about something about this device because one of the specs is listed is it's a 2.2 gigahertz processor but then i opened up cpu z and there it is the qualcomm snapdragon 665 2.8 gigahertz processor and you can see four of the cores are actually working at that speed currently. So you've got your kind of four efficiency cores and four fast cores. So this seems to be the same processor that is in the Tab Ultra C Pro. The Tab Ultra has the Snapdragon 665, but limited to the two gigahertz. So I'm kind of confused here about this family of processors that they've got. But in any case, this backs up, this is a no compromise device when you compare it to the Tab Ultra series. All of these latest devices seem to be using that same family of 665 chips. So it really gives me confidence like going forward and using this device that actually you're gonna get the same performance as the Tab Ultra C Pro here. And I'm gonna be using this device for the next two weeks at work and I will bring you my thoughts. As always, you'll find links for this in the description. This device, the Note Air 3C and the Tab Ultra C Pro are available first at the Onyx Books website and that's generally been the cheaper place to get the bundle with either this case or the keyboard case in the ultra c pro so it's probably going to be the same thing for this one too let me know what you think about this device i'm going to be making some comparison videos that'll be out very very soon and then i'll bring you my full review after two weeks actually using it at work i imagine you can see my excitement there so my first set of questions were well if you are an owner of a books tablet right now if you have the note air 2 or the note air 2 plus should you go ahead and upgrade to this is it necessary? So of course I made a direct comparison, side by side comparison, the Note Air 3C and the Note Air 2 Plus. And there are a couple of benefits actually about the Note Air 2 Plus, so stay tuned. So the Note Air 2 Plus or the new Note Air 3C. On paper, this is a bit of a no-brainer. Just 50 pounds more for all of these benefits. For example, the fingerprint reader, the color screen, and as we'll discover, so much more. But there are still two benefits about going black and white if you're just in it for reading and note-taking. That's the battery life, and because text still generally looks better on a black and white screen. And in terms of the battery life, well, it started yesterday, it was at 73, sort of 24 hours ago. I've been using it on and off to test it out, install apps and things like that, and I'm down to 33%. So let's have a look at a few things side by side so we can really see the difference between these devices. First of all, let's talk about the specs. So I'm gonna get the press release. I'm actually gonna download that and open it with Neo Reader for the sake of fairness. And you can really see as I skip around, you can still see the image retention in the Note Air 2 Plus, which is just gone on the Note Air 3 series. So it is doing the book super refresh technology and that's possibly why battery life isn't so great. So let's talk about the specifications. At the bottom of this is a comparison of the specifications. Here we are. These are essentially the three 10.3 inch devices that they're currently recommending and selling. Uh, it's the Note Air 2 Plus, this one, 1.8 
8 gigahertz octa-core processor. Android 11 versus Android 12 here on the Note F3C. The Note F3C has a 2.2 gigahertz octa-core processor, it says, although when I went into CPU Z and actually inspected that processor, it tells me it's a Snapdragon 665 at 2.8 gigahertz. I asked this question and yes, indeed, it was actually just a misprint here. And that actually was always a 2.8 gigahertz octa-core processor. So that's good news for everybody that in fact you will get a 2.8 gigahertz octa-core processor. It is the same as the Tab Ultra C Pro. So that's absolutely fine. I can also say, while well, I'm just doing a little bit extra here for these videos, I can also say that I have indeed planned out my next Fortnite on this device. And I can tell you that I did really enjoy this. It was excellent. And I really like the writing feel. And I like SmartScribe, and generally the whole device feels really, really quick because of that extra processing power. What I would say about SmartScribe is sometimes when I'm drawing on it, is accidentally I've been writing something and it's kind of selected the text like that underneath. But that's just something for me to get used to, I think. If you can quickly turn off SmartScribe, for instance, I'm not sure where that would be in here. There it is. You can turn it off through there if you didn't want to use any of that. But can you see the image retention here on the Note Air 2 Plus is really telling, and that just a little bit there, it just generally gets wiped out here on the Note Air 3C. We'll do that in any of the balanced fast modes. But these screen modes are the older type of screen modes, and there is none of that sort of auto clean, super refresh, clearing out the ghosting. You've got access to that full screen refresh whenever you want. It. I'm currently in X mode in this device. The speed mode might be a better one. Yeah, that's quite good. You know, I mean, it's quite all right, isn't it? So back to the specs. Don't kick it out of bed, really. If you've got one of these, you don't necessarily need to update straight away. Note Air 2 Plus is actually slightly heavier, but 15 grams is not much at all. They've got the same battery life, same four gigs and 64 gigs. Although this, the new Note Air 3C has an SD card slot, and that's where the old power button used to be, which was never a good place for a power button. But now the power button has a fingerprint reader and is up the top here. And of course, then the difference is the color screen. And the color screen is a 300 dot per inch color screen over here in black and white, 150 dot per inch in color. And this is just 227 dot per inch throughout the whole device. I wanted to just show the difference in the lights because if I take both lights right off, now you can see how much darker really the screen is just naturally on the Kaleido free screen compared to the older black and white e-ink one. So much more of the time you're going to be running the lights much higher. If I go half lights here on both and both as cold as they can be, you can still see much brighter here. So generally you're gonna be, I used to use this generally about a third, just left it on, left it somewhere in the middle, good balance. As this, I tend to leave this on about two thirds and again, somewhere actually towards the colder side to give you truer colors than on the Note Air 2 Plus. And just for the sake of completeness, right up, you see actually even then, the lights themselves are actually brighter here. This is it, as warm as possible. It's the opposite way around on there. Oh, I see. So this is it, as bright as possible with both in. That would be in the middle. So the, they operate the front lights slightly differently, whereas you've got a single controller for each of the warm and cold lights, whereas here you do the brightness and then you do the warmth on a separate slider. So let's go back to where I was kind of comfortable with both. I've been looking at this in drive rather than in the reader. So you also got the Tab Ultra 3C Pro, which is out today as well. And I'll be doing a comparison as to whether I think you should buy the Tab Ultra C Pro over the Note Air 3C in another video. And the question I think is whether, do you prefer reading on a lower contrast or a higher contrast device? Because this screen, the black and white screens can tend to still give you better contrast because the white space is much wider. So let's go into Chrome on both and have a little look at some browsing. And you can see so much more often we're getting this horrible retention. That's because it's gone into X mode there. So I would put that into speed mode. X mode is really not good for much. I'm just so used to seeing it clear out that white space. And here you can see it's streaking the text all over the page and it doing nothing to actually clear that out. Of course you can refresh and it's gone. But I would say if you're asking yourself, well, do I need to upgrade from this Note Air 2 Plus to the Note Air 3C? Well, if you're used to this and it's been doing just fine, it hasn't been bothering you, then the only reason you're gonna notice it bothering you is if you do take that upgrade, get used to seeing it clear, and then you go back, you're like, why isn't it clearing? So it's all about the comparison. I personally think if you've been using this device and you've been happy with it, 
and it, you don't need anything different in your workflow, then I would still love the one you're with and I would still just appreciate this device for what it is. Generally though, scrolling is a lot smoother on a tablet with the book Super Refresh. You can really enjoy the embarrassed look on Zuck's face more with that nice brick red on there. <laughs> I mean, they're balanced, yeah, and to live in balanced. You know, to my eyes, I can see this is more pixelated, but what's more distracting is the image retention. It's just clearing up white, black space so much better on these super refresh enabled devices. So let's have a look at the note taking app. The key difference is there. I did actually notice that this is really lightning quick. Yeah, I can feel that this one is slightly faster than this one. There is a noticeable lag. I'll slow that down in the edit. There is a slight delay. You can see that's about a centimeter behind as I do that same speed of stroke and that's about a couple of millimeters behind. So they've also made some changes to the note taking app. For instance, in the latest update, they've gone for gestures and gesture controls so you can individually change each gesture. Whereas this control button, you can turn touch right off which I actually prefer, but you've still got a slight issue with this slide and drag on the page. And I am getting some accidental page turns in my PDF planner here on the Note F3C, which I don't get across here because I can simply turn touch right off in the PDF app. You've also got some other significant upgrades, which is SmartScribe, where actually you can do things without having to change tool. So for instance, rubbing out or selecting, just knows that gesture as a select. And I think that's quite nice. You've also got tags. Ah, so when I, do, when I didn't do anything, that's interesting. I didn't do anything, it went back to, oh, it must have been ink then. So that's quite good as well. So it's not wasted if you don't do it. You can also tag, yeah, and then it randomly thinks it's a lasso once you've actually selected out. So you need to go back out of the lasso menu. I should change that. You can also tag words. Didn't like it that time, did it? And it will automatically recognize them. How do I go to those tags? Do I need to go? No. So I think it needs a kind of table of contents thing here where you can get to your tags. Um, they'll probably realize that and bring it. You know, this is one thing that I've always been talking about quite a lot, which is the books, they make updates without necessarily thinking them entirely through. So the updates are thick and fast, which is good in one sense, but when something that you're used to using, like just being able to turn off touch in your PDF, that goes and all of a sudden you're back to having accidental page turns, that's annoying. And the updates will probably come to the older devices as well, but they just take a little bit of time to filter down. So should you upgrade? This Note Air Free C is a no compromise note taking device with the power of the Tab Ultra C, and it's pretty compelling. But I would say, ask yourself if your current device is doing what it needs to do. As you can see in this press release, books have committed to more than three years of free firmware updates for all models after the launch date. So if you're using an older device, you can still expect it to improve. You also, incidentally, for all new accounts, you get 10 gigabytes of cloud storage, which is a no-brainer. So unless you're getting frustrated that you don't have certain features on your older device, not having color might be the main one, or unless you just love the latest tech and that's okay, it's okay to enjoy new things. Love the one you're with and just enjoy watching books innovate and then splash out on something new when it really has the features that's going to improve your workflow. Right now, this is a splendid new iteration and that's the way books develop their devices. They make iterations. It's up to us as consumers whether we really feel the kind of urge to buy something new. That's their model of innovation. And when they get a new set of chips in or a new set of screens, they don't just build it into you know a new series of the same kind of device. What they do is they actually release a whole new product. And that doesn't make the previous generation obsolete. There's one other thing, which is the case that's been released alongside this can actually stand up into portrait mode, which I must say I quite like. And then using a Bluetooth keyboard like so, is actually quite a viable sort of e-ink typewriter. I'm just interested to see, I haven't actually tried this yet, whether the cases are backwards and forwards compatible. They should be because the form factor is identical. Didn't feel like it snapped in there though. No, they're not. Uh, the magnets must be in different places because that is not staying put in there. And yet, yeah, nor is that staying put in there either. So no, don't go buying a Note Air 3C case to try and use with your 2 Plus. That is an interesting point of comparison as well. If I go back to the Notes app, do I get any wobble from the cases? So just a little bit here by the clasp and I think a little bit that, yeah, just here at the bottom, somewhat towards the edges. I don't know if there's any up there. Yeah, a little tiny bit by the clasp there, but actually even better controlled than here. Generally, neither of them are bad for magnetic cases. I've seen far worse. As always though, you'll find links in the description and you'll find this Note Air 3C first at the bookstore. And that
tends to be where you get the best prices in terms of the cases being bundled in. So check that out in the description. So yeah, maybe you can see it isn't a night and day difference there. You are still able to use the Note 2 Plus in its intended use case, and you're still able to get almost the same functionality. However, I do think that Color e Ink is a massive upgrade if you intend to use all of these Android apps. But what about a comparison to something else that already had that same Kaleido free screen? Well, the Tab Ultra C, the first version, is it worth upgrading to the Note Air 3C from that? Well, let's have a look. So the Tab Ultra C versus the Note Air 3C. And this is a very interesting comparison now. The Tab Ultra C, it seems it's sold out and it seems it's been just supplanted by the Tab Ultra C Pro. Something uh, the king is dead, long live the king in that, isn't there? And it seems like the Pro model is going to be my most recommended device. But here on the Note Air 3C, you are definitely getting a no compromise alternative in a note taking form factor. There's no compromise at all on power. In fact, if I'm to believe what CPU Z tells me, in fact, this is now the more powerful device than the Tab Ultra C. The Tab Ultra C Pro, however, does have this, the 2.8 gigahertz Snapdragon 665. Funny because this has been advertised as a 2.2 gigahertz processor. I'm not going to re-record any parts of this video, but it was always a 2.8 gigahertz octa-core processor. So it's the same processor that is in the Tab Ultra C Pro. And you don't have to choose between performance then, you just have to choose between form factor do you want the that's incredibly strong magnets do you want the sleek design like this for your note-taking tablet or do you prefer a more like a laptop more like a pc replacement productivity powerhouse like the tab ultra c pro will be performance is the same battery is slightly larger over on the pro but the difference is really do you want to carry around something thin and light like this and i can tell you after having used it now for a few days of work that it is lovely and thin and light and i like a lot about this new device so well done books it's another triumph but i'm really not noticing that difference in the performance based off that evidence anyway, in my daily use of these devices so far. But I think the real question is between the Tab Ultra C and the Note Air 3C is do you see yourself spending most of your time in laptop mode typing into apps, for example, or do you see this large investment into improving your work life as being more of a replacement for notebooks? That's how you're going to make that decision. Do you want a notebook replacement? Do you want a productivity powerhouse? So let's have a little look through the specifications and I'll get up the press release here to actually show you the Ultra C Pro versus the Note Air 3C. So they're still talking about this as an e-ink tablet and this is a tablet PC. They've both got the same color screen. It's the Kaleido free screen that we've seen in a few devices now. 300 dot per inch in black and white, 150 dot per inch in color. This on paper you see has a 2.2 gigahertz octa-core processor. So both have good processors and both are a bump up on the previous generation of processor. Both are now updated to Android 12, which is cool to see and that should give you a little bit longer of security updates, which is a concern for people. They both have a micro SD card slot, so the this is the first of the Note Airline to come with a micro SD card slot, which is just below where the power button was, just below the side charging port there. And now the power button is on top and is also a fingerprint reader, which works just as well. It is almost certainly the same fingerprint reader, which is in the Ultra C. This has four gigabytes of RAM and the previous Tab Ultra C had four gigabytes of RAM as well, but now it's upgraded in the Tab Ultra C Pro as six gigabytes of RAM, so that's good to see. 3,700 milliamp hour battery and 4,600 milliamp hour battery. Now I'm suspicious that that will mean that this now has a worse battery performance than either the Tab Ultra C or the Tab Ultra C Pro. And based on my use of it today, I can tell you that I'm already almost down to the point where I need to charge it and I've been using it for about 24 hours. It was, wasn't full and I have been doing quite battery intensive things on it, like downloading and installing apps, which always seems to sap quite a large portion of a battery to install a lot of apps. But I think we'll find that actually if you still want battery, there is still a reason to be looking back at the Note Air 2 Plus. And then there's the thickness, 5.8 millimeters of thickness and slightly lighter, just 20 grams lighter, 430 compared to 450 grams. An important comparison to make though is that price. You can see this is a full 150 pounds cheaper than the Tab Ultra C Pro, and you're probably going to be wanting to buy the keyboard case. I don't see any real reason to buy that without buying the 
keyboard case over this device. Another comparison is this does come with the Pen Plus, I think they call this one, whereas this one comes with the Pen 2 Pro, which has the eraser on the end. But one of the improvements to the software that's come out with this and will also be on the tab Ultra C Pro is the gestures, the um, what they're calling it, Smart Scribe. A Smart Scribe is actually pretty clever because it gives you some AI kind of controls, one stroke formatting into shapes. Just hold it down at the end and it turns into that. So you don't need to select a sort of shape tool. You can just go ahead and draw the things like that. Scribble out to delete, which is quite cool, or ring to select. It will guess that if you're ringing something, even though you're still in the pen tool, it will guess that you wanted to select that. So I think that's quite cool. And that won't be here yet, although I suspect they'll bring that as an update. Yeah, so it's not here on the Tab Ultra C yet, but it'll be on the Tab Ultra C Pro. One thing I noticed which was interesting, different about the two devices, is that actually the front lights are clearly different. You see now if I go both off, this is the same screen. There's a slight, it actually looks slightly darker here because this screen does have the texture, the matte screen protector, which gives it more of a paper-like feel. Whereas this is, I don't feel like this is a glassy screen like an iPad screen is. I mean, it's made of glass, but the screen protector here is less textured than it is on here. And that is actually limiting the clarity. It makes it less clear, the actual writing. If I look really closely at both of them, see that is the Note Air 3C. I think it's slightly clearer here on the Tab Ultra C, but neither are bad. The lights, if I go through the full range, see they just give a slightly different colour more than anything. It's not so much that the brightness is different, but there's a slightly warmer tint over here in all of the settings. So I thought that was quite an interesting point here. Right to the very top. This one does go up brighter, which it doesn't need to. And generally what I found when I used the Note Air 2 Plus was I was going about a third brightness. Whereas with these generations on the Kaleido 3, I go for about two thirds brightness. Just that, leave it on like that most of the time, really. Now, are the notes any faster? I mean, this does feel, honestly, ever so slightly faster. I wouldn't be surprised if this comes out of the tester test, just slightly ahead of the Tab Ultras of the world. And Voya gets around to testing the actual screen latency, which is the best test we've got to compare them. I wouldn't be surprised if this actually comes out slightly ahead. It really is noticeably nicer to write on and it really is like when i was testing out yesterday i was thinking wow actually this is really very low latency it might be because of that upgraded processor i don't know but when i say this is a no compromise powerhouse of a device it's just in a note-taking form factor it is true now again i've talked about this in a couple of videos but i'm not so keen i don't think they've fully finished developing their new gestures changes there because i am getting some accidental presses when i use my pdf planner and that's what I will be using at work, although perhaps I need to change that. What you had on here was simply turn all gestures off. And that means that you don't get any accidental page turns here and you just use this to turn the page. Ever so occasionally you get an accidental page turn here and you can just turn it off and you're not bothered. But now they've changed it to a gesture thing where it should be that slide and drag the page. That should be on, I think, right? Now that means a page turn which is slide. But unfortunately it still does a page turn by just tapping in the corner there. Now I know I can actually turn that off. That's cool, that's a new feature. You can add a blank page into PDF settings. There we are, touch settings. Yeah, so it's because of this one. I don't want that one at all. I want mode six, which is only touch at the top. So actually that should solve my problems there, which is cool. But that could have been in here for me. Just, I want a button here, which is just turn off single click page turn. And then we sorted, long press just select things. Yeah, smart scribe works everywhere. Yeah. Okay, that's an improvement in my opinion. Well, it's not necessarily a reason to go for the Note Air 3C, but it is a reason to upgrade to either the Note Air 3C or the Tab Ultra Pro. But I think it will probably be coming to the Tab Ultra. So let's look at Neo Reader. And I hope you're probably getting the pitch here that, that actually this is actually sort of outperforming in some cases the Tab Ultra C. And I think the Tab Ultra C Pro will be just as good. It has got the screen modes of the Tab series rather than the screen modes of the Note Air series. So that's welcome. But I haven't discussed yet the Elephant, discussed the battery yet. And that is where that difference comes in. It's using the book Super Refresh, but we take a hit for that, which is the battery. Delacroix use quite a muted color palette anyway. Let's go and get some Van Gogh shot deal on both of them. This is just a bad scan, well, we'll see. Now I'm hoping there'll be some color plates at the back. No, nothing doing. I like it. So yeah, as you'd expect, very similar screen performance. I kind of think I might just be just preferring the newer one. Both lights right off. This is going slightly faster, isn't it? Through these kind of like refreshes. Yeah, this is a slightly zippier machine, isn't it? Look great though. So this is performing better. Now let's look at the range of light. 50% all cold, 50% and balanced. This is looking darker, 100% balanced. 
This is looking warmer, 100% warm. They're about the same actually. So get it to a kind of good level. I would use there and there. They're the same, but I think you can see that there actually are better processors. This is actually a faster machine than this one is. Interesting. I wasn't expecting that when I pulled it out of the box. So which should you buy? Well, I think it comes down to, are you going for productivity or are you going for note taking? Right now, if you're going for productivity, well, the recommend is the Tab Ultra C Pro. You will no doubt get that extra performance there. But if you're looking for a note Book replacement then I think you should still stick with the Note Air line. So if you're looking for a notebook that can sit next to the keyboard on your productivity machine, then you go for the Note series. But if you're looking for the e-ink tablet to be your productivity machine, then you should probably go for the Tab Ultra series. Now, as always, you will find the links in description for these devices and you'll find this 3C and the Tab Ultra C Pro. You'll find those first at the bookstore. And that's been the best place to get a cheaper deal on the keyboard cases. So that's where you should look first. But please remember, if you are actually still using a books device and you're enjoying it, it's doing everything that you want it to do, and you aren't frustrated about lack of maybe some of the very latest features, there's nothing about this that you would think, ah, oh, wow, that's going to change my work life. Then remember to love the one you're with and just keep going with that excellent books device that you've already got in your hands and let them innovate, enjoy watching them innovate. And then when there's something that really will change your life, then that's when you want to splash out the extra cash. Thanks for watching. I'm firmly in the camp that it's about your use case. For one person, it's going to suit them to be more in this note style. And for another, it's going to suit them to be able to convert into that laptop style and use the keyboard. Of course, you can use a keyboard Bluetooth to this, and that is what I'm trying to do more and more. So I am going to go back to using the Note Air Free C rather than the Tab Ultra C Pro, which has been my daily driver recently. And well, I'm going to let you know what I think of that. There's a couple of good reasons for that. It is that much thinner, it is that much lighter. And the keyboard case, of course, makes it such a heavier device, the Tab Ultra C Pro. And because it's so thin and light, it is gonna slip in and out of my bag much more easily. I do have to use my school laptop at work. And so I do think this notebook style format does sit more naturally next to something that has a keyboard like a laptop already. Whereas I hope that the Tab Ultra C Pro can replace my laptop entirely in the future. It can already do a lot of it, but not all of it. And the difference in actual functionality is not massive. It's just that form factor which is different. So I think that there is a place for both of them. Now, of course, the battery life is somewhat of an issue, although you're used to charging devices. And so this will fit in there as something that you do have to charge more regularly than an ordinary ink tablet. But it's not an ordinary ink tablet. Let's see my final thoughts after I've made all the comparison scores and used it for two weeks at work. Onyx Books Note Air 3C, and this is my full review. I've been using the Note Air 3C from Onyx Books as my daily planner and my productivity tablet at work and at home for the last three weeks, and I'm very impressed. You can see the journey that I've gone on with this device in lots of my content on this channel, including in-depth live streams, feature demonstrations, and discussions of where this sits in the current state of being tablets. This is undoubtedly one of the best e tablets to date. And this is the latest in a line of devices from Onyx Books, which have enjoyed massive popularity. Books are doing their very best to dispel the myth that e-ink is slow, and they're doing that better than any other company. They've found a way to make e-ink respond with lightning fast speeds and high refresh rates with very little loss of clarity or image retention. And they've put in some higher end processors here, making this a device which spans the categories of e-reader, note-taking tablet and productivity machine. Key features of this are this matte and textured screen protector here. It makes it a wonderful place for reading and writing and drawing. There's very little glare as well. And it's got a great pen and screen feel. It is an enjoyable surface to write on. It's got that tactile feel of quality pencils. And the tools are improving all the time. For instance, we now have a proper pencil with both pressure and tilt. And that's frozen up. It does it more often than previous books devices did. I have since found that this only happens with the new pencil with texture with both pressure and tilt. So for now, just stay away from using that tool if you don't want your device to crash. I have let books know and I'm sure they will fix this and I will do a video at some point drawing on the Note Air 3C. So at that point, I hope to be able to tell you that that is now solved. But for now, use the older pencil or just use the pen tools and it is still a great place to draw on. And you can be sure that it isn't just going to crash and lose your notes. And it thinks it's fully restarted, although it is there. Oh, and it didn't save that note I just made. Don't know whether I'll leave that crash in for the sake of fairness or... The thing is, you see those things in live streams. 
the sake of flowing this video review along. Maybe not. No, you see, it doesn't. Some shading will make it think that Scribble is on, so I'll turn that off. Okay, it's been a bit of a surprise. It's crashed twice whilst I've been drawing on it. Okay, a few frustrating little bits with it today. What I will say is I have used this at work and I have only found it actually crashed with me when I've been doing a live stream and when I was filming this video. So it has been stable. It has worked perfectly fine for my use case at work. And I did use it for two solid weeks and I did not find that it crashed. It woke up every single time and you can see my two weeks of planning if you like here as my notebook. It did what it claims to do and I didn't get any crashes during the week. I wonder if there's just something with that notebook, with the new pen tools, that's perhaps making it a bit unstable and that they will fix that in an update. But although those pen tools are improved, they're not as good as the best in the class on, for instance, the Scribe. The pencil tool is fantastic and they're remarkable too. The note-taking app is fully featured. It's good for drawing and for organizing all of your notes. I really want to see books bring a drawing-focused app such that large amounts of notes that's the issue there that actually drawing is a lot more strokes than simply writing would be so we also need an app not just that can handle layers and all of the colors the thing can produce and lots of different textured brushes we need an app that's stable there for drawing as well it is a fully featured note-taking app with all of these tools for it you to be able to link between pages or between files even. And what's more, the screen response is lightning fast. And please remember that that is in the book's note-taking app. In other drawing apps, you don't get that kind of fast response. Within the note-taking app, it's one of the fastest latencies on the market. Latency means the time between the pen actually hitting the screen and the ink appearing. You don't even need to write in the box, for example, to get the handwriting recognition to work. When you're in the handwriting recognition keyboard, the whole thing is just a canvas for writing. So you can see that the screen response is just nowhere near as good in Sketchbook or any third party app designed for LCD screens. I do also love the vertical screen mode. You could pair this with a mechanical keyboard, a Bluetooth mechanical keyboard, or indeed a wired one that could go into the USB here. And this could become a really nice place for typing. I don't have a mechanical keyboard in front of me just now, but I can show you just how quickly it connects. And the screen response is very good for typing too. You have one of the best stations for typing on the ink around. And I also like that you can continue to use the on-screen keyboard and use the voice recognition and then just use the keyboard for editing the text, something I use all the time. The Kaleido free screen is wonderful for different productivity apps. But if you were going to be using productivity apps for like more than 90% of the time, I would recommend having a look at the Tab Ultra C Pro instead. It has a clearer screen finish. It has a built-in keyboard, a faster processor, and an increase in RAM. And that's gonna give you that smoother experience with clearer visuals on a productivity orientated device. That being said, it's still a better productivity device than most rival e-ink tablets. Overall, I'm rating the Note F3C as above the Books Tab X for professionals. And that's the larger 13.3 inch device. And it's an amazing tablet. This device can be so very versatile for you. The Books Super Refresh and the Kaleido Free Screen are a match made in heaven. You can just see the way it's clearing out that white space immediately without having to do a full screen refresh. But for work, really, it's the Tab Ultra line with their keyboard case and now even a trackpad on the Pro model, which is the home of the ink for productivity. So stay tuned for a video where I'll compare the Books Tab Ultra C with this, the Note Air 3C. I personally cannot wait for Books to bring us a 25.3 e-ink monitor with this GPU acceleration so that we can all use the best of the operating systems for professionals, so use Windows, or use Mac OS and surely that can't be too far away. You know at that point then the battery life isn't something to worry about anymore because it is the case that for certain apps generally when the screen is running at very high refresh rates then you're going to be using the battery life quite quickly. So for just reading as a Kindle actually it's quite low battery drain certainly for having the brightness of the lights above 50% increases the battery drain quite considerably and you're going to want to run the lights reasonably bright most of the time 
because of the darkness of the color eing screen. I tend to run them about there, about two thirds. Some new features in the latest generation of their software, which will be coming to all devices that are less than about three years old, are the AI, what they call smart scribe features. I really like the quick and generally accurate text recognition. Although I will say the best handwriting recognition is just in the book's keyboard, which you can use to enter into any text box. But you also have a feature like Shape Perfection, which allows you just to hold down the pen at the end of any stroke and you get a shape or a line which conforms to a perfect shape. <laughs> you can also use fill as well which is just a nice to have and this is going to let you make some quite nice diagrams and drawings as well. I also like the strike through erase which just means any kind of scribble is interpreted by the note taking app as a just delete that please and any sort of ring round is interpreted as a select that stuff please which is quite nice so you don't need to go into a tool on the side here or indeed even turn the pen there's not an eraser on this one but that is a quicker way to get access to just delete this stuff please and this makes it a much more capable and intuitive place to make your notes that means it's a good device for thinking and decision making for professionals so no ed 2 plus was already a great place for reading and learning but i'm actually going to rate this higher for reading the color screen has made it even more usable for academic and educational texts and one is just generally a benefit of books is that you can go to a browser and download your pdfs this way it's just a nice place for documents that have color figures for instance and you can really easily enjoy this top and bottom article mode if you're wanting to read something which is designed to be read A4. That being said for reading you will need to temper your expectations for battery life. It will not last for the weeks that the Kindle Scribe will last for for instance and the darker background of the screen. Although I actually think that the blacks are dark enough to give it enough contrast between the grayish background of the white space and that gives it enough contrast to be a really comfortable place to read. There's definitely some personal preference to come into play here between whether you prefer this darker background and color ink or the lighter background of the black and white screen. I am actually rating this as one of the best devices for reading and just hear me out. I'm sure that color ink screen is not perfect but I think there is a subjective choice there. The other best screen for reading is the 300 dpi screen on the Kindle Scribe and uh, this is 300 dpi still in the black and white but it's slightly lower contrast with the white space and the issue is for you guys as consumers is that it's not easy to find places where you can actually see these great devices in person and that's a marketing opportunity for books in my opinion. Well I did see they do have some in a store in New York City so if you're in the area they seem to stop them in B&H photo as well so I'm not sure if they'll have them in store but they've certainly got them online perhaps you could ring and find out the other option of course is to take advantage of one of the great returns policies in Amazon for instance but I digress but what is not subjective is that for many purposes having color is a helpful thing to have for instance viewing magazines or reading academic or professional documentation or of course reading online and the books PDF reader is one of the best in its class it may take you a little bit of time to get your head around all of the features that it has. For example, the article mode, which can let you go into this top and bottom mode. And now they've introduced SmartScribe where I can highlight whole passages and then I can edit how much I want to actually keep into that passage. And I can highlight them with different colors and attached to that, I can add a separate annotation, have it recognize, or of course use the audio to write this out. And then all of these will be kept in my table of contents along with any scribble notes that I choose to make is just kept as notes on top of the page. See my annotations with the thing I've highlighted and the text that I've written. And you can see every page that I've written on will be here in this handwriting menu. And I can just select the ones I want and I can export those. I can also filter these highlights by color here as well. There's really powerful reading tools on this device and that's why it's such a great reader. And it is in this size, for books at least, it is the lighter and more portable device. I really loved having this as my planner. It is thinner and lighter than the alternatives. It makes it a pleasure to slip in and out of the bag. It wakes back up in seconds and returns to wherever you were in whichever PDF you were. So return back to my planner like this. Planning the PDF is an absolute pleasure. It's a wonderful place to make your notes. And I can now add in blank pages or I can link out to other web locations or other documents. So my final verdict on the Note Air 3C. This is great value. 
sure it's not cheap it's 550 euros or 500 dollars but you get it with some extra tips and a case as well i think it's good value and if you're certain that you just want a large e-ink reader then sure save yourself some money and go buy a kindle scribe that will be a kindle that you can write on and it will do for some basic note-taking stuff if you're certain you just want note-taking then again save the money and go buy a remarkable too but when you get either of those and you fall in love with the ink for your professional life which you probably will you'll wish you had spent a little more and you've got an Onyx Books. And really the only competition for the Note F3C is from Books itself. If you do want something smaller or larger, or you fancy a device with a keyboard case and a little higher performance, well, you can check out the full lineup of Books devices on my channel. Get started with these videos now. And there's links in the description for all of them. Or of course, you can just get this one from the links below because this is where the value is at right now. Thanks so much for watching and supporting the channel. I was really surprised by those stability issues that I had with drawing. I think that might be importing the software up to Android 12 perhaps. So I do expect books to have solved those pretty quickly. It seems to be in any kind of intense use cases within the Notes app that it's causing the device to crash. So hopefully they can get those solved pretty quickly. And I can tell you that in my daily use of it, I haven't had that happen except for when I've been doing the drawing. <laughs> filming for reviews <laughs> or in live streams, but also that I can emulate that crashing with the drawing at any time. But I don't think it's an inherently unstable platform. And it is actually true that I do still use the Tab Ultra C, the original. So I am really looking forward to the next couple of months now where I am going to use the books Note Air 3C as my daily driver at work. And I'm gonna bring you that whole story. And I'm gonna bring you all the content on that journey, what I think of actually using the Note Air 3C rather than the Tab Ultra C Pro. And that's been shaped by your comments and your requests. So please do let me know what questions you have about any and all of these e-ink tablets or any and all of my content. And in the meanwhile, have a look at how it stacks up next to some of these other excellent e-ink tablets. Thanks so much for watching.